there's a whole lot of requirements. And we usually get a requirement from our customers who come in and say something like, we just need the Wi-Fi to work everywhere fast. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Not to mention, we can't design Wi-Fi for all Wi-Fi clients. Just as an example, iPhone 1 had Wi-Fi. Now, if you were going to design to make it efficient for an iPhone 1 today, you're designing for 2.4 gig, not for 5. And that's just one thing. It had a bad antenna, the bad chipset. Years go by, and those older chipsets, slower, yeah, use more airtime, yep. More airtime means less density. So we can't hit capacity if we're designing for those older devices. So we need to know which device we're designing for, which one device we're designing for. Now, if we pick the right one, hopefully all the other ones will come along. So you need to know all your requirements. Now, I put on the slide a couple of groups here. The group in the green box are the things that you can put into your design or validation tool. Primary coverage, secondary coverage. Some people call that overlap. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. If you want to look it up, there's a fallacy of channel overlap a white paper I wrote probably a decade ago now about how we don't do overlap in percentage. We do overlap by DBM. Also, what goes in which frequency? What goes in 2.4? What goes in 5 gig? If you allow your customers to answer this one, they will eventually, if you give them enough help, get to the point where they realize the only thing that should be in 2.4 are 2.4 only devices. You get to use only 2.4, they stay together. The only thing that should be in 2.4 are the 2.4 only devices. You don't want a 5 gig capable device over in 2.4. He'll have a bad day. One, going to 2.4 means he'll have a worse day than he had in 5 gig. Not to mention, he'll be taking away a slice of capacity from something you can't go anywhere else. Bad, bad, don't go that route. Another thing we should look at is co-channel inference. We should design for it, we should measure for it, we should validate it. It's the killer of Wi-Fi. I can just throw up AP after AP after AP. But if you have two APs on the same channel and they see each other, you have the capacity of one AP, actually a little less than one AP because they're going to be sharing. So co-channel inference, you definitely have to put it as a requirement. You design to it, you validate it, and you make sure it stays as far away from your network as possible. Device to radio ratios. There's not a lot of devices that say this. When you buy a Chromebook, it doesn't say no more than 17 Chromebooks per SSID or per radio or per AP. They don't say that. The things that really need that are usually voice over IP handsets, and they do. Part of the reason they do is because the way they use the Phi and QoS. So figure out what your device is, what it specifically needs, and make sure you give it what it wants. Both primary, secondary, co-channel interference, data rate, SNR, all of the things. Now, I'm not one to, to dwell on terms like, is this area high density or low density or medium density? I don't care about density. What I care about is what's the requirement? For a school, the main requirement might be all the classrooms. If there's 30 devices in the classroom or 50, I don't care. That's the requirement. So that's normal density. What I care about is special density areas. In a school, it might be the auditorium. In a hospital, the normal rooms, the hospital rooms, that's normal. But if you go to the nurse's station and nurses congregate there, now that area is special. So it's more about designing to make sure you meet where the special density is. A stadium, that's normal density for a stadium. You go out into the walkway or to the tunnels, that's a special density because you have a different density than where people are. So think about those. Now, the ones on the right. Jitter, latency, end-to-end QoS. There's a whole bunch of things over here. We don't measure these with our Ekahau or Tamosoft or Air Magnet. They're more of a vendor-specific. They're still valuable. They're still very important. You need to know them. They're a strong requirement. But we're just going to measure them using different types of tools. So this one, it's all about the requirement.